Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Gender and Development Studies, SOGDS. Postgraduate Diploma in Women's Relationships Within and Across Gender and O Augment Your Perception on Femininity and Masculinity and Its Critical Relations with Culture, Sexuality and Religion. 1.1 Introduction the unit begins by exploring the definitions of gender and investigates the interface between the concepts of gender and sex. It highlights the matrix of relationship of gender with other related spheres like sex, identity, ideology, stratification, stereotype and the like. It also investigates the issues revolving around femininity and masculinity, the impact of the discourse of femininity. And masculinity on religion, sexuality and culture are also discussed. 1.2 Definition of Gender According to Anne Oakley, 1972-18, gender is a matter of culture, it refers to the societal classification into masculine and feminine. In other words, gender refers to a specific cultural meaning system that attaches to being a male or a female. Gender is a sexualized identity of individuals in relation to the customs, traditions, ways of life and the like. It is the social and cultural construction of roles, tasks, attitudes, values and qualities of males and females. The formation of gender differs from one culture to the other, as it is a culture-specific aspect. The community or society as a whole contributes to the definition of gender. Often, our society influences us about the ways in which we expect males and females to behave and live in a certain way. 1.3 Concept of Gender Gender is a multifaceted reality that is culturally constructed and socially determined by the society. In other words, gender portrays culturally and socially constructed roles, responsibilities, privileges, relations and expectations of women and men. Because these are socially constructed, they can change over time and differ from one place to another. Gender refers to behavioral differences between males and females that are culturally based and socially learned, Appelbaum. The distinctive social construction of both men and women. The basic difference between men and women is the principle of biological reproduction in which this biological difference overshadows the other qualitative variations and achievements. Juliet C. W. Mitchell opined that the concept of gender was introduced in the early 1970s to distinguish the acquisition of social attributes from biological ones, for which sex was reserved. In her view, gender is now an inclusive term that ultimately has come to include even biology. Mitchell believed that gender did not have a history or a psychology in which gender has come to replace women, as in, gender studies, versus, women's studies, at exactly that point where the intimate association between women and procreation is tending to wither away. She argued that to think of women is to think of women and children, to think of gender is to think of men and women but it is also to think of women and women or men and men. Margaret Meads, 1935, study of the three societies in the New Guinea Islands, though contestable on several grounds, contributed significantly to the shaping of the concept of gender in the latter half of the 20th century. The functionalist notion of sex role was also a crude precursor of the concept of gender. It suggested that men and women are socialized into sex-specific roles, namely instrumental, and expressive. These roles were regarded as the basis of a complementary relation between men and women, which along with the sexual division of labor, contributed to a stable social order. Scholars have questioned the focus of this conceptualization upon individual men and women who are socialized into sex-specific roles. They suggest that gender is something more then roles performed by men and women just as economies are something more than jobs performed by individuals, Loba 1984. Critics have also pointed out that socialization is always a precarious achievement and that agency, 
interpretation and negotiation are a part and parcel of how gender identities are actually constituted. 1.4 Differences between gender and sex Gender gives attention to the socially constructed characteristics of men and women. Gender is a social construct whereas sex is the biological makeup of male and female. Sex is what we are born with and does not change over time, nor differs from place to place. According to Kendall, 1998-68, sex is the biological difference between men and women. It's the first label we receive in life. In some cultures, gender deals with women's supposed vulnerability. Their identity as the second sex or fairer sex and their need to be protected. The main gender difference is basically in the biological functions of reproduction. Barbara F. McManus, 1997, also argued that feminist scholars have been differentiating sex from gender and view the latter as a socially or culturally constructed category. She asserts that gender is learned and performed, it involves the myriad and often normative meanings given to sexual difference by various cultures. She opines that feminists may differ in the importance they assign to sex, which is a biologically based category, but the idea that gender norms can be changed is central to feminist theory. Although sex and gender systems differ cross-culturally, most known societies have used and still use sex and gender as a key structural principle organizing their actual and conceptual worlds, usually to the disadvantage of women. Mark Manus has the same opinion with feminist scholars, who argued that gender is a crucial category of analysis and that modes of knowledge, which do not take gender into account, are partial and incomplete. The distinction between sex and gender, which came to dominate theorization in the sociology of gender in the 1970s, is premised upon the idea of universality of sex and variability of gender. Anne Oakley's Sex, Gender and Society, 1972, made the sex-gender distinction very popular in sociology. For Oakley, sex is a Word that refers to the biological differences between male and female, the visible differences in genitalia, the related difference in procreative function. The term sex and gender can be traced to Robert Stoller, an American psychiatrist, who used them to deal with cases of individuals whose biological sex did not match their gender. The prominent theorist of feminist anthropology, Henrietta Moore, 1988, argued that there was nothing self-evident or determinant about gender, and that anthropology with its capacity to understand how differently cultures around the world conceive of gender and sex, it could not treat the idea of womanhood as straightforward and unproblematic. On the other hand, Simone de Beauvoir, 2010-21, states that males and females are two types of individuals who are differentiated within one species for the purposes of reproduction, they can be defined only correlatively. At the same time, Arya Bandhu, 2009, states that gender refers to the biological or sexual differences between men and women, which make substantial distinctions in how they behave, relate and respond to needs of the family, kinship, caste, community, society and the state. These factors are indications of gender differences and gender roles, which were facilitated by the process of socialization, customs, norms, historical traditions and the government machinery. Undoubtedly, the epistemology of sex needs to be briefly examined through Michel Foucault's philosophy. Foucault, 1976, argued that the role of sex and Sexual activity in the discourse of Western society during the 17th century made a fundamental and radical change. His investigation of discourses on sex arrives as a consequence to the commonly held conviction that there was a gigantic repression of sex. Foucault raises questions on whether or not sexual repression is truly an established historical fact, whether prohibition, censorship, and denial are truly the forms through which power is exercised in a general way, if not in 
every society, and whether there really was a historical rupture between the age of repression and the critical analysis of repression. He pointed out that through the evolution of Christianity and its doctrine especially of making confessions regarding sexual sins, society was compelled to start on an elaborate and inexhaustible discourse on sex. Simone de Beauvoir, Ibad, opined that one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. Beauvoir clarifies that gender differences in society make men superior through their role as breadwinners. The theoretical framework of gender needs to be drawn further from Margaret Mead and Simone de Beauvoir. Mead, 1928, revealed how the behavior of men and women differed from one culture to another and thereby challenged the notion that all gender differences were innate. On the other hand, Beauvoir, Ibad, argued that the division of the sexes is a biological fact, not an event in human history. Male and female stand opposed within a primordial mitse, and woman has not broken it. The couple, man and woman, is a basic unity with its two halves riveted together, and the cleavage of society along the line of sex is impossible. The critical trait of woman is that she is the other in a totality of which the two components are essential to one another. Beauvoir argued that Woman is heavily handicapped, though her situation is beginning to change. Gradually, even till today, although women's legal rights such as Dowry Prohibition Act 1961, Domestic Violence Act 2005, Hindu women's right to inherit property, and the like are legally recognized, a long-standing custom prevents their full expression in the mores. Despite the constitutional guarantees, Indian women do not enjoy absolute legal and equal rights with men. Our people uphold the gender biases and culture of patriarchy that are deeply entrenched in the society. In Beauvoir's view, both men and women can also be said to make up two castes. From economic perspective, other things being equal, the former hold the better jobs, get higher wages, and have more opportunity for success than their new competitors. She asserted that in industry and politics, men have a great many more positions and they monopolize the most important posts. Today, women are beginning to take part in the affairs of the world, but it is still a world that belongs to men, to decline to be the other, to refuse to be a party to the deal. This would be for women to renounce all the advantages conferred upon them by their alliance with the superior caste. Leela Dubey 2001, deals with the intricacy of gender in her empirical study of the Gond tribal society in southern Chhattisgarh during the 1950s. She pointed out that an encounter between an anthropologist as a woman, with a whiz, society, appears to be a relationship that is determined by gender, with the understanding that flows from a sensitivity of understanding by the actors involved. Dube being a woman anthropologist with a rich experience and having the same biological and cultural imperatives of marriage, family and childbirth that every woman encounters in her life, was able to create a conducive rapport in which she interacted meaningfully with the gaunt tribal women and understood about their struggles. With regard to gender roles, Masonis, 2002-262, cited Talcott Parsons and American sociologist who claimed that complementary gender roles between men and women promote the social integration of families and society as a whole. In other words, Parsons opined that gender forms a complementary set of roles that bond women and men into family units for carrying out various important tasks. Women take primary duty for managing the family and raising children whereas men join the family to the outside world through their participation in the labor force. Parsons argued that distinctive socialization teaches both men and women about their suitable gender identity and skills. Boys were taught to involved in the labor forces and also to be rational, self-assured and competitive. On the other hand, girls were taught to be absorbed in the process of child-rearing, domestic chores and being sensitive. The processes of socialization facilitate 
children to learn and internalize the norms and values of the family, community, and society and learn to perform their respective roles. Both boys and girls were nurtured to become men and women through socialization in child rearing, family, beliefs, education, various jobs or service and cultural practices. Gender role deals with different responsibilities and expectations that society defines and allocates to men and women. These are not necessarily determined by biological makeup and therefore can change with time and in different situations. Gender involves the matrix of relationship between men and women, which can be changed from a patriarchal to an egalitarian one. Therefore, gender is a collective and societal formation, which is often stereotyped and can be altered. While sex is perceived as unchangeable, as it is a natural institution in the past. However, with medical advancement, innovation and scientific technological revolution, sex can be altered in our contemporary society. The subject of sex change, or sex transplant, or transgender, has become a critical and sensational public discourse in India today. Box 1. Transgender. Transgender is an individual who is often assigned a sex at birth, but who consider that he or she belong to the opposite sex and his, her, natural given sexual characteristics as an imperfect description of himself, herself. Here, we would provide a brief description about gender ideology and how it influences the process of gender stratification and gender identity. It will also examine the way in which gender stereotypes take place in the society. 1.5 Gender Ideology According to Andre Bette, 2018, an ideology is that set of ideas and beliefs which seek to articulate the basic values of group of people what they cherish for themselves and for others to the distribution of power in society. An ideology is not a systematic theory, although it has systematic properties in it often strives to be a theory. It may or may not succeed in articulating basic values to the distribution of power, but such articulation is part of its purpose and design. Greeting, 1996b, 586, describes gender ideologies as how a person identifies herself and himself with regard to marital and family roles that are traditionally linked to gender. In other words, gender ideology may refer to the value of distinctive roles, rights and tasks for men and women in their respective society. Sometimes, it deals with the prevailing legitimate gender inequality based on caste, class, tribe and the like. In view of Andre Bettiler's idea on ideology, it can be argued that gender ideology is also a part of beliefs that sustain gender stratification. The noted feminist and anthropologist Sherry Otner, 1996, pointed out the intricacies of gender ideology in her work in Nepal among the Sherpas. She opined that in every society, women are viewed as closer to nature, whereas men are identified with culture, a prejudice that she blames for the universal second-class status of women. She also examined at men's obsession with female chastity, and their systematic control of women's social and sexual behavior in traditional societies. She maintains that this ideology was bound up with the emergence of patriarchal extended families, social hierarchies and the state. 1.6 Gender Stratification Russ Long, 2012, opined that gender stratification cuts across all aspects of social life, cuts across all social classes, and refers to men and women's unequal access to power, prestige, and property on the basis of their sex. To be more precise, through the process of socialization, individuals encompass gender into their personalities or gender identities and gender roles. In the context of patriarchal Indian society, men are given more power and resources as compared to women. Therefore, gender becomes an important dimension of social stratification. With regard to resource distribution among the matrilineal society, a system in which descent is traced through the mother's line or maternal ancestor, an individual belongs to one's mother's lineage and the children or 
offspring would inherit a movable or movable property and titles or surnames from their maternal lineage. In India, the Garo and Khasi tribes in Meghalaya, the Muslim tribe of Kalpeni in Lakshwadeep and the Neves of Kerala are matrilineal societies, although the Neves have gradually transformed themselves into patrilineal society at present. Here, gender is a crucial factor of social stratification even in matrilineal societies. Gender stratification may be analyzed from a structural functional paradigm. The structural functional paradigm is a theoretical framework that perceives society as a complex system whose parts work together to advance solidarity and stability. The major insight of the structural functional paradigm is that gender functions to organize social life as emphasized by sociologist Talcott Parsons. Macy Onus J. John Ibbard, 332, argued that gender implies more than how people think and act. It is about social hierarchy. The reality of gender stratification can be seen first in the world of work. 1.7 Gender Identity Gender identity is defined as an individual's perception of oneself as male or female or third gender and it also deals with how society views you. This concept is closely related to the concept of gender role that reflects gender identity. Madhu Kishwar, 1996, in her article, Who Am I? Living Identities vs Acquired Ones, argued that she became conscious of her identity as a woman only on those few occasions when she was discriminated against on account of her gender, for Example, when facing sexual harassment or biasness in employment. Otherwise, her gender identity is only one of her multiple overlapping and cross-cutting identities, which peacefully coexists with other identities. From a sociological perspective, gender identity involves all the meanings that are applied to oneself. On the basis of one's gender identification, in turn, these self-meanings are a Source of Motivation for Gender-Related Behavior, Burke 1980. Sometimes, gender identity is imposed on individuals by society. Gender identity is also self-identified as a result of a combination of inherent and extrinsic or environmental factors. Gender role, on the other hand, is manifested within society by observable factors such as behavior and appearance. The formation of gender Identity is a multifaceted process that commences with conception and it involves processes during gestation and even learning experiences after birth. In some societies, the traditional norms insist that everyone be classified either as a man or a woman. When the gender identity of an individual makes her a woman, although her genitals are male, she may experience what is known as dysphoria. That means a profound depression caused by experience of herself as a woman and her lack of phallus. Gender role is normally an external expression of gender identity. Majority of people believed that gender identity and gender role are in accord. Sometimes, cultural differences proliferate in the expression of one's gender role, but in some other societies, such fine distinction is accepted since. Gender norms can play a part in describing gender identity. Box 2. Gender division of labor. It is the consequence of how a particular society divides work among men and women according to what is considered appropriate to each gender. 1.8 Gender stereotype. Gender stereotypes are one-sided and exaggerated images of men and women, which are deployed repeatedly in everyday lives. Stereotyping is a process by which children are socialized into sex roles, and by which adults and children are denied opportunities for more individually varied development. Marshall, 1994. Gender stereotype is the assignment of roles, tasks and responsibilities to a particular gender on the basis of preconceived prejudices. It is also the assumptions made about a particular gender that may be positive or negative. Often, we observe that gender stereotyping is based on past speculations although it may not be true. Gender stereotype barely convey truthful information about other people. 
Alternatively, gender stereotype is a basic overview about the gender. Characteristics, disparities and roles of individuals and groups. Whenever people apply gender assumptions to others, they are propagating gender stereotyping. Gender stereotyping often reveals conventionally simplified visuals concerning the standard social roles of men and women. Some of the stereotypes of men and women are, men are not sensitive, women are not great drivers and women love nagging and gossiping. Gender stereotypes are beliefs held about characteristics and activity domains that are considered being appropriate for men and women. The typical characteristics of traditional Indian women are submissiveness, piousness, obedience and passiveness. In other words, a traditional Indian woman's role is to be in charge of domestic chores like serving her husband, looking after her children, cooking and cleaning. Such women were appreciated as virtuous ideal Indian women. In India, our culture upholds that respectable women are sensitive, caring, dresses decently and speaks softly which are considered as core values to make women more feminine. On the other hand, power and authority are traits commonly held by Indian men. The men are perceived to dominate the activities related to economics. The economy mode largely determines the social position of men and women wherein men are the center of family and society, whereas women are a part of property of men. Such type of gender stereotype creates a negative impact on women's lives. Nevertheless, it is a fact that gender stereotypes are dynamic and not static. It is influenced by the ideology and economic situation of a particular era. Both men and women carry out their responsibilities according to the division of the innate characteristics of gender. Gender stereotypes are reflected in marriage, family and community activity. What is gender inequality? Find out how does gender inequality come into play in educational institutions, in the classroom, selection of courses and administration. 1.9 Femininity and Masculinity Meanings Femininity is a quality of being feminine whereas masculinity is a manly characteristic that distinctively describes men and boys. The terms masculinity and femininity are gender categorizations whereas male and female are sex categorizations. Both femininity and masculinity are rooted in the social rather than the biological. Jan E. Stetz and Peter J. Burke pointed out that societal members decide what being male or female means, e.g., dominant or passive, brave or emotional, and males will generally respond by defining themselves as masculine while females will generally define themselves as feminine. Because these are social definitions, however, it is possible for one to be female and see herself as masculine or male and see himself as feminine. In India, the main driving forces of socialization such as family, kinship, community, peer groups, schools, print and electronic media and the like strengthens the cultural definitions of what is feminine and masculine. Leela Dube, 2001, made a distinction between the ideas of femininity from the concept of femininity that is a characteristic of women's identity at a structural level in which she saw it as a continuous process in women's lives. She argued that these processes have effect in the existing space between biological truth and kinship relationships. In her argument, women are perceived as upholders of kinship, who also determine the relationships between genders. Dube focuses on the patrilineal, patrilocal descent pattern of the Gaunt tribe while studying their kinship. Structure that determines the rule of descent and the sharing of property and resources. Margaret Mead was one of the first to empirically ground the distinction between the biological and social characteristics of men and women. She did this rather dramatically through her study of the conceptions of masculinity and femininity. Among the Arapesh, Mundugamo and Chambuli, three non-Western societies. In the New Guinea Islands, Mead 1935. She found that, among the Arapesh, both males and females displayed a feminine temperament, passive, cooperative, and expressive. 
Among the Mundo Gamo, both males and females displayed a masculine temperament, active, competitive and instrumental. And, among the Chambuli, men and women displayed temperaments that were different from each other and opposite to the Western pattern. In that society, men were emotional and expressive while women were active and instrumental. Mead's study caused people to rethink the character of femininity and masculinity. It becomes obvious that different gender-related traits, temperaments, roles and identities could no longer be inextricably tied to biological sex. On the basis of this study, Mead argues that the Western equation between masculinity and aggression on the one hand and femininity and nurturance on the other is but one among a number of possible permutations of characteristics which have no intrinsic relation with biological sex. 1.10 Origin of the terms femininity and masculinity Today, the psychoanalytical studies of gender identity have attempted to Understand the origin and relationships of femininity and masculinity. The origin of the terms femininity and masculinity emerges after Sigmund Freud, 1962, formulated his theory of sexuality based on the anatomy of men and women. Sigmund Freud showed interest in the discourse on femininity and masculinity during the late 1870s in which he attempted to examine this issue from the bisexual and psychosexual development perspectives. His works in three essays on the theory of sexuality, 1962, and in his article, Feminine Sexuality, 1931, espouse the idea of a bisexuality that involves, in every human being, a more or less harmonious synthesis of feminine and masculine characteristics. According to Freud, the antagonism of femininity and masculinity go before the other pairs, of opposites like active and passive, phallic and castrated which pave the way for it. He also opined that femininity emerges after the reorganization of the psyche at the time of puberty. The antagonism between femininity and masculinity tends to be hazed in view of the fact that both sexes are amalgamated in the similar rejection of a femininity that is equated with being deprived of the phallus. He was not entirely at ease in his approach to the questions of feminine sexuality and bisexuality. His critics pointed out his limitations in this area, particularly with regard to his equation of femininity with passivity. 1.11 Dichotomy of Femininity and Masculinity The term dichotomy has become a critical query in contemporary epistemological debates. The meaning of dichotomy deals with a division or contrast between two things that are or are represented as being opposed are entirely different. Oxford Dictionary Online 2011, it can be perceived as dualism which categorizes how we believe. A dichotomy presumes a belief in the reality of dual contradictory principles in every aspect. In this method, dichotomy operates hierarchical intentions by defining what is normal and abnormal, what is evil and good, what is excluded and included. The dichotomy of femininity and masculinity becomes critical in contemporary society. In our everyday lives, people would expect us to act, behave and live according to our specific gender. Many people are not able to live up to standards that are set for women and men. Often, parents in India would advise their children to behave according to their gender. For instance, girls are taught to be coy, sober, sensitive, soft-spoken and submissive whereas boys are encouraged to be aggressive, dominant and tough. Masculinity is manifested in being strong and tough whereas being weak and soft are associated with femininity. It is not possible to call these Indian cultural phenomena natural. From the moment a child is born in our family, questions would be raised whether the baby is a boy or a girl. And, the cultural expectations are formed around the children, based on gender, conscious and unconscious. Motives of having the family legacy continue through the boy bring delight. Toys like cars, lions, guns and elephants are bought for him preferably blue and never pink as it is categorized with masculinity. When a boy grows up, he would 
be taught to act brave, valiant and not cry like a girl. He is trained to suppress his emotions as he is told it as feminine to express it. He is encouraged to pursue sports, manage finance, drive, involve in decision making but discouraged from domestic chores. He has fewer restrictions while going out owing to his masculinity, which also defines his primary role as breadwinner. On the other hand, if a girl is delivered, her room is maybe decorated with the supposed feminine color pink and dolls are purchased for her. The infants do not care concerning their identity being associated with colors. They are not even conscious of the significance of pink or blue colors which people link with femininity and masculinity. In India, a girl child is often considered inferior to a boy child. The thought of giving her away and saving for her dowry and marriage expenses may bring misery for her parents. She would be encouraged to learn cooking, dancing, singing, housekeeping and the like and she may have restrictions on going out. Her gender would define her role and function at home as sister, aunt, wife, mother and homemaker. Activity. Are masculinity and femininity related to prejudice? If your answer is yes, to what kinds of prejudice are they related? Box 4. Gender gap, unfair differences in the situation or access to service of men and women. These may result from religious prejudices, traditional practices, social assumption, myths and taboos among others. 1.12 Relation, Significance and Contribution of Femininity and Masculinity on Religion, Sexuality and Culture in India. Here the question arises as to how does religion affect femininity and masculinity? Why will religious beliefs, practices, or organizations reflect or deviate from dominant patterns of gender inequality? To what extent will religious influences affect gender inequality? It is evident that religion, culture and tradition in India are commonly used to justify women's inferior position in the society. The main religious texts have been interpreted to strengthen the power of men in our society. Gon Sulin, 2005, asserts that women's usefulness have been defined from a male's perspective. This is explicitly witnessed in Hinduism. There is an intrinsic link of femininity and masculinity in which the notion of goddess as Devi represents the female characteristic of the divine being among the Hindus. The concept of Shakti, power, symbolizes the divine feminine creative power and also signifies the sacred force that moves through the entire cosmos and the agent of change. Shakti indicates the feminine counterpart without whom the masculine characteristic, which represents consciousness or discrimination remains powerless and negated. Shakti is also known as Prakriti being the feminine manifestation of Brahma who is the supreme god of wisdom by which the universe exists and functions. The comprehensive force known as Yoni in Hinduism is feminine in nature with motivation being the life force of creation. Indisputably, Hinduism celebrates femininity and masculinity in distinctive dimensions. Traditionally, the subject matter of sexuality is a taboo in the public domain. However, it is remarkable to mention that the ancient Hindu sculptures and idols, positioned in various temples across the country, including the historic Ajanta and Ellora Caves reveals the sexuality, femininity and masculinity associated with gods, goddesses and religion. The specific carvings and wide-ranging designs Covering several temples show deities in almost every sexual position that you can imagine. Such portrayals of sexuality may be appalling for some people but, if we understand Hinduism, the display illustrates an Indian conventional way of thinking about sexuality. In our country, gods and goddesses have always been seen to embrace diverse kinds of sexuality and the physical connection between Two beings is perceived as a means to attain spirituality, nirvana. The center of attention in Hinduism is not on whether the sexual participants are biologically the same or different to each other. Interestingly, transgendered gods can be traced in Hinduism too. 
it becomes clear that gender is socially constructed and that sexualities have been displayed in india through its religion for many centuries the division between femininity and masculinity represents the indian traditional model where differences between genders are often exaggerated both genders men and women are biologically determined and unchangeable wherein they are distinct with separate spheres of influence and qualities hence the discourse on transgender gays and lesbians are not accepted at ease in india at the same time masculinity is more highly valued in our culture and it is expressed through certain characteristics like chivalry power courage boldness achievement invention and poise which are perceived as being inherent to them these qualities have been acknowledged as masculine in biological as well as physiological aspects it is perceived that the contributions of femininity and masculinity are different but it should be valued in the same way it is important to point out that the hindu masculine cultural values refer to the spirit of struggle wealth competition goal power and authority intriguingly the feminine cultures give emphasis to additional value on relationships between people and attributes of life on the other hand the masculine cultures highlights the differences between gender roles which are more dramatic as compared with the feminine cultures wherein men and women possess similar values emphasizing compassion and humility it allows us to reflect and perceive new ideas of gender sexuality and religion india stands for unity in diversity wherein every ethnic group and caste is different from each other but we tend to believe that deep inside all people are the same especially when the question of sexuality arises in the sense we tend to minimize cultural differences with regard to sexuality in order to be able to understand and gain esteem with regard to cross cultural relationships between different castes class ethnic groups tribes and communities we need to create massive awareness of the diverse cultural differences 1.13 summary femininity and masculinity have been the central representation for understanding gender femininity and masculinity signifies the social outcomes of being female or male in their respective characteristics some feminists assert that biological differences get heightened through social descriptions of femininity and masculinity as judith butler opined any theorization about gender introduces the idea of performance of gender in terms of masculinity and femininity therefore performance of gender becomes instinctive as gender gets internalized through the socialization process within the dominant discourses of patriarchy gender is performed at different levels within the family kinship class tribe and caste we socially enter into our gendered categories of femininity and masculinity from the day we are born today social categorization of femininity and masculinity are blurring there is a constant shift in the conceptualization of men and women as controlled by complete biological or social forces thank you for watching we will see you in the next video with the next chapter